to remove the breakers, uh, if you have the Onan Marquis 7000 like I do, uh, you'll see right here it says breakers 30 amp then, uh, then the 20 amp one. And it's the 20 amp one that you want to switch out with 30 amp. So to get back in this corner, I used this little mirror and uh, then I could see where the screws are. So you have to unscrew it over here. Then you have to take off the face panel and you gotta be careful because it's got what you know cables hooked to the side and the bottom so it doesn't like easily come out now I can access the breakers inside and you can see there's two there one on the top then one on the bottom it's the bottom one that I need to take out so now I need to figure out how to get my fingers in there and uh, get that out first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna mount my automatic transfer switch it's going to be located in the same bin as the inverter, so I won't need that many cables uh, to stretch that far. However, I will need to put uh, some 6.3 from it to the outlet, so I'm going to have to go up into the RV and then over uh, into the bin next door. And I'm not putting this in the bin next door, just because that's where that's where my water connects and uh, every once in a while you know it gets a little damp in there so um, I'm not gonna put it in there I'm putting it next door where it's always dry <laughs> Alright, so I have my uh, fiber board and I'm just going to cut it to the right dimensions to fit in the uh, distribution panel center and then I'll cut out the holes where all of the mounts will go. So now that I got my panel all cut out to the perfect size, I've uh, measured out and then uh, drawn where I need to cut the holes to put the actual uh, power centers, you know, mount them into the to the wood panel. So this is what I got so far. And then I still need to draw uh, the little uh, uh, squares for where the other, the two Xantrex products will go. So but I don't have them, <laughs> they're like all hooked up and I haven't taken everything, you know, and powered down yet. So um, I'll have to probably do that tomorrow uh, when we turn off the electricity and uh, get all that started. Success, that's what they always say, measure, measure twice, cut once. And for me, it's like usually measure four times, <laughs> cut once. <laughs> so whew, I got that done. As you begin to disassemble everything, make sure that you are putting little tags so you know what uh, cords are coming from where and uh, so that you can hook them back up again properly. So I had the three cables that are coming up to the distribution panel and uh, your RV is probably gonna be a little different, very maybe similar. Um, but anyway, uh, we just took the cables and we just shoved them down this little track in the wall and then they came down underneath the dinette and then just kind of traced the floor and then down the holes in the floor. Those holes go to the bin where uh, everything's located. So that's all the cable running that we had to do. And there's going to be a little cable, well actually a big cable, it's a, another 6-3. It's going to go from where the receptacle will be through the wall where there's already a hole of the bin and then into the bin I mean they're almost back to back the where the receptacle will be and the transfer switch and so 6-3 has to run there so I mean it's like three feet you know maximum so anyway that is all that had to be run and uh, uh, it was kind of a bigger task to take the old stuff out than put the new stuff in this is the power that it will come from the transfer switch 
to the uh, the whole power center up here and we also got installed these two uh, let's see what size are these T 10 yeah I think these two 10 fours and these are going to the uh, generator <laughs> I'd have to double check the map but anyway we've got pretty much all the cables uh, installed and, and ran uh, then um, pretty much after this we just kind of put the new board back on and here we got the new board over here so I painted it <laughs> to match my wall so anyway it's like a it's a total mess in here you can just see like stuff all over not the best living situation nor is that <laughs> especially because it's still summer and uh, no AC either so these are the two uh, 10, 10 fours that are coming from the uh, distribution panel and when we fed them since they're going to the same spot and you know they've been like pushed through the floor and uh, they went down the back of the RV uh, it's, it was easier to so you don't know like so you've got two similar looking cables they're the same cables coming down and you know one has to go into one spot in the inverter and the other one has to go into the other spot so to know which one goes where and to make it for certain match uh, where you're directing it up at the distribution panel we took electrical tape this red tape and just wrapped it around and we wrote inverted so this is going to be the one that's going to be powering inverted power and uh, It'll, you know, it has to attach to the perfect spot in the distribution panel and to make sure it goes on the inverted side we've put this tape uh, just like this on the other end so that's kind of a nice guide uh, if you've got so many cables running and uh, you're going to need to know, you know which one is correlating on both ends so that's something that you can do to help yourself out that way there's something that I learned while having to buy all these different cables and um, you know speaking with engineers and then speaking with electricians and at some point I couldn't quite figure out where I was getting a disconnect of information and I, I now understand uh, so many things I misunderstood before and that was when I was trying to figure out cables so sometimes you don't have to get exactly the type of cable that has been said because there's two different styles. Um, that being said, you should always get the same gauge. Like if it says six, you should get six. If it's 10, you should get 10. Anyway, um, the differences that I learned that exist, uh, for example, this is 6.3 non-metallic NM. So it's 6.3 NM and it's, it's called with ground. So you might see WG after the name. So what that means is basically there's three conductor wires in here and the six stands for the gauge. So there's three conductor wires of the size or gauge six. However, when it says with ground, that means there's going to be an uninsulated ground in here. What that means uninsulated is it, is it doesn't look like the conductors. It's just a, a straight copper wire that's just pure copper whereas the conductors they're kind of made of a bunch of different smaller wires inside their own insulated casing so even though there's four things in here this is called six three uh, because the ground doesn't count as a conductor so sometimes you might uh, be able to get away with you using six four for example, that's what you should be using on your outdoor uh, shore cable. And it's, it can be the same, it can act as like the same thing. However, instead of having a solid ground, it's got a whole nother conductor that can either be used as a conductor or it can be used as a ground. So uh, this one is uh, six, four, and then this one is 
6.3, even though both of them have like four different things inside. So anyway, that's something that I, I couldn't figure out, you know, or this one's called like, I think, Stranded, because the ground is stranded and insulated. And this one, it's just a, a long metallic strip of copper. So anyway, that's kind of uh, something that, after I finally understood it, I was wondering why, you know, you could do so many different things and um, now it makes sense. So hopefully that sheds a little light on any pro projects you might be working on that involve these kind of cables. Also, it should be noted that, so for an outdoor 50 amp cable, you're gonna need gauge six. And if you get four, one with four conductors, like a 6.4, instead of a 6.3 uh, with ground, the ones when they're stranded are much more flexible. So these are like way easier to use outside. And then because this one has the uninsulated ground and it's just a big long, kind of like a coat hanger, you know, the thickness of a coat hanger, it's not as flexible. So the 6.4 stranded is gonna be a lot easier uh, as, as your outdoor 50 amp short cable.